Today we're diving into a world of imagination and creativity. Our must-use items, a simple funnel, some foil, and my personal favorite, decorative napkins. Get ready to unleash your creativity as we explore the art of decoupage in a whole new way. Hi, my name is Katie from Lady Red Crafting, and let's get started. I found this beautiful dish the other day when I was out thrifting with my daughter, and I thought this would look amazing if we decoupaged it and added some paint. So what we're gonna do is start out by taking some of this silver paint that I have, and this paint is from Delta Creative, and it's considered a luxe metallic silver acrylic paint. And after we flipped over this dish, there's an indentation on the bottom piece of this dish. And that is where we're going to paint the silver paint. And to ensure full coverage with this paint, you do need three or four coats. So be patient and give yourself some time to do this. And if you do get a little bit of paint on the dish outside of the design, don't worry if it's not too dry, it will clean up very nicely. Now let's get prepped for the decoupage. We're going to start out with this beautiful napkin here, and I got this napkin at Home Goods. And I'm just going to remove the back two layers of the napkin. So we're going to flip the napkin over, and we want the front side of the napkin to go on the back side of the dish. And before we go too much further, I wanna put this on a paintable surface because this next part will get a little bit messy. I'm going to grab my Mod Podge, and this is just some regular matte Mod Podge. And I put a tiny bit down on the dish just so that nothing moves around too much. And I reposition my napkin. And once I've done this, I'm going to just go for it. And I take my Mod Podge, and I'm just going to paint down the napkin onto the surface of the back side of the dish. And by placing this upside down, it's gonna show through on the other side when we flip the dish over. And don't worry about the excess napkin. We'll take care of that later. Right now, just paint everything down to the bottom edge of this dish. And once you are satisfied with the Mod Podge, you need to let this sit. Do not touch it. Do not try to dry it. Just let it sit like two hours or overnight, just let it dry until it looks almost like it's crusting over. So now that it's dry, let's take a quick look-see at what it looks like right now. As you can see, this is really translucent, but we're going to change that. So first, let's go ahead and remove any excess napkin. And I'm using my zip sander for this. You could use a razor blade or you could also use a regular block sander. Now that we have everything removed, I went ahead and I grabbed my Waverly chalk paint in the color white, and we're going to paint a coat of paint over the top of the napkin. But depending on how thick of a coat of paint you do with the white, you may want to do a second coat. I felt like I needed a second coat, so I ended up painting a second coat on this. Now once this is completely dry, I'm gonna show you another look-see. I know I probably should wait till the end, but it is so cute. I love how it's turning out. Now let's go back to our silver acrylic paint and go ahead and paint a coat of the silver over the top of our white paint. And for the silver paint, I feel like this really needs two coats. So I did do two coats of the silver. Now, once the silver paint has completely dried, I did take this outside. And to seal in the silver paint, we are using our Rust-Oleum Clear Enamel in matte. And now that our piece is completely dry, let's see what this turns out like. And wow, this is a stunning piece. I love how it turns out. I can't wait to display this to put our keys in. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you're enjoying this content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. For this next craft, we're starting out with two funnels that are the exact same size. And for one of the funnels, we're going to take a razor blade and we're gonna cut about one and a quarter inches off of the funnel piece. And these funnels I did get at the dollar store. They came in a three pack of funnels. 
Next, we'll just insert the two funnels into each other to make an hourglass shape. If you're using these funnels from the Dollar Tree, they have a little like spot where you can hang your funnels. So I wanna make sure that those are lined up before I hot glue this together. There also is a little bit of a line on the funnel piece, so that made it easier to line everything up. Next, I grabbed my hot glue and I just filled that top funnel up until everything stuck together. Now let's take this outside and paint this with some Rust-Oleum Stone Texture Finish. Now this may look like it's a warm sunny day here in Washington State. And while it might be sunny out, it is definitely not warm. So it took quite a while for it to dry between coats. So this did take me overnight for me to do one coat, then dry and then overnight again. I think this might've worked a little bit better if I had primed the funnels first. But in the end, these still turned out just fine. Now for this next step, I'm using some wood planks that I got at the Dollar Tree, and we're going to use two of them. And I put them on a paintable surface, and using my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink, we're going to go ahead and paint both sides of these planks. While we have a moment, I'm thrilled to be part of Just Our Imaginations playlist, hosted by Kathy Jo DIYs, Brenda at Rustic and Lace DIYs, with this month's guest host, Tiffany, from Simply Blessed Crafts. This playlist is all about creative challenges, and this month we're tasked with using a funnel, foil, and a napkin in our crafts. The host will pick their favorite, and the winner gets to be next month's guest host. You can find the playlist and the host links in my description box below. Check them out and see all their amazing creations. Thank you. Now, while those are drying, let's go ahead and grab out our aluminum foil. Yes, I did say aluminum foil. We're gonna set out a sheet here on our table. Next, I grab out my Mod Podge, and this is matte Mod Podge. For this next step, we're gonna take our Mod Podge and we're just going to paint a light coat of Mod Podge over the top of the foil. And I do about half of the sheet at a time just to make it a little bit easier on myself. Next, we're going to lay down a paper napkin over the top of the foil. And this is just the top layer of the napkin. And now for our fourth layer, we're going to use some cling wrap and go over the top of the napkin that's on top of the Mod Podge, that's on top of the foil. Once we've laid the cling wrap over the top of the napkin, I'm going to take my roller and the roller over the top of the cling wrap is gonna keep the napkin from tearing, but also help it adhere to the foil better. There still will be some wrinkles because of the foil, but it does take away a little bit of those wrinkles. If you don't have one of these rollers, I'll put a link for one in my description box below. They work out great when you're doing some Mod Podge projects. Now once that napkin has dried, I am going to go over the top of the napkin again with my Mod Podge and do another coat. Then we need to set this aside to completely dry. Once our decoupage foil is dry, I'm taking this little flower that I have from the Dollar Tree from last year, and I'm just going to trace out a whole bunch of flowers and cut them out. I'm going to start out with about five of these flowers. Next, I grab my Stampin' Up! punch that I've had forever from my scrapbooking, and I'm going to just punch out five or six of these from our decoupaged foil. Now I'm going to stack up some of these little flowers and see how they look on top of each other. And what I decided to do was trim up the first two flowers a little bit so that they would have some dimension. So we kind of have one, two, three, and then the remaining flowers will be about the same size as that third one. Next, I grab my hot glue and just put a dot down in the center of the first flower and I just stack them on top of each other. And I continue to do this until I'm happy with the size of the flowers. For these little flowers that I punched out, I'm gonna put those in the center of my flower. And I ended up for my final flower using three of these little ones in the center. 
I didn't get all of this on film, but you'll see me fluffing up the flowers, kind of making them crunch up toward the center. And then I'm going to add more layers on the back side and in the center till we have three little flowers in the center. And I think I ended up at the very end having about eight layers of flowers on the bottom part. And now here's what our final flower turns out to look like. Now for our next step, we're going to take our Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and I'm going to grab four quarter inch dowels. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm kind of painting and staining them in a way where I paint it and then I wipe down the paint and then I do it again. And you know what? At the end of the day, I should have just painted them just straight up black and everything would have been just fine because that's what I ended up doing at the end. So now that those dowels are painted and dried, we're going to go ahead and put together our little hourglass. And I'm taking these little screws and I had to drill into these dowels just a tiny bit just to help prep when I was going to screw these in. I'm only doing this on the base of the hourglass. On the top part of the hourglass, I'm going to use some wood glue and hot glue. So I did pre-drill my little holes in my square here. And next, from the back side of the square, we're going to just put these screws straight through. So I'm just going to screw them through to make this a little bit easier so we can flip it over. Now that we have this flipped over, I'm going to grab my wood glue and I'm just going to dab a little bit of wood glue on top of the screws. We grab our dowels and the side that we've already pre-drilled our hole, we'll just go ahead and twist until everything is tight and we just leave it there and let it sit for at least two or three hours for it to dry. Now let's go back to our funnels. Using some hot glue, we're going to just add a bead of hot glue around one of the tops of the funnels and then carefully set it in between all of those dowels. And one quick note, I did make sure to center the hook that's still on the funnel and I made sure that went toward the back side of this hourglass so that nobody would see it from the front. And now for the tricky part, putting the top on. I'm starting out by using some wood glue and I'm just putting a dab of wood glue on each one of the dowels. Next, I grab my hot glue and right before I'm ready to put the lid on, I'm gonna take that hot glue and I'm going to put a bead around the funnel. Then we're gonna put the lid on as quickly as we can because we don't want that hot glue to dry before we can get everything in place. Once I had the lid in place, I did put a heavy book on top so that way it would set while it was drying. Now while that is drying, let's make one more embellishment. I'm using these chalkboard tags that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to trim it up a little bit because it was a little bit too large for our piece. Using my Cricut Joy, I made two little tags. One that says, always time for coffee. And on the other side, it's going to say, wine time. And just to seal everything in, I did take my Mod Podge and did a coat of Mod Podge over the top of those Cricut letters. And if you don't have a Cricut, no problem. You can use some chalk and just write whatever you'd like, like time for spring, time for coffee, time for bed, whatever you want to put. Or you could stencil on there or use stickers or not even put a tag. Now, while that tag is drying, I went ahead and hot glued that little flower right on top of our hourglass. Doesn't that look great? And for our last step, I just tie my little tag right on to the top of that hourglass. Here is our finished hourglass. Wow, this is so amazing. I think this turns out so cute. What do you think? Would you change anything? Do you like how it is? Let me know what time it is for you in the comments below. Who doesn't love a quick and easy canvas craft? 
This is going to start out with a five by seven canvas that I got at the Dollar Tree. And we're going to grab some painter's tape and I'm just going to frame out the canvas. Now once we have that all in place, let's grab our napkin and you can use any napkin you like. I found these beautiful Martha Stewart napkins at Home Goods, and I really enjoyed the spring colors in this, which is why I chose this napkin. And to prep this napkin, I just unfolded it and pulled the back two layers of the napkin off, so we're only using that top layer. Since we're using a small canvas, we're only going to use one of these butterflies. Instead of cutting the napkin, I'm going to use the water method, which is where we take a paintbrush and we're just going to put a little bit of water on the paintbrush and draw around what we'd like out of the napkin and tear the napkin. Once we have our napkin piece ready, I'm going to do a quick fit check on the canvas. And I realize I'm going to need to cut a little bit more off of the napkin. So we just do that same method where we're tearing the napkin until it fits perfectly inside our rectangle. And if you're enjoying this video and haven't subscribed yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Thanks! So now that we have a napkin that will fit right into our rectangle, I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm painting a nice coat of Mod Podge in the center of that rectangle. And now very carefully, I'm going to set that napkin right in the center of our canvas. Now let's place a layer of cling wrap over the top of the napkin. And by doing this, we can easily straighten out and do any smoothing of the napkin on the canvas while the Mod Posh is still wet. Now once the Mod Posh is completely dry, I go ahead and I grab my Mod Posh again and do a coat to cover the top of the napkin. Next, let's go ahead and grab some Sugar Metallic Sand Castle paint. And this paint is amazing. It goes so well with that napkin. So I'm gonna use that to blend the canvas in with the napkin around the outside edge going up to that blue painter's tape. And now once that has dried, I went ahead and I grabbed my Waverly paint in the color Sandstone. And I did the exact same thing, just a lighter coat of the paint over the top of our metallic paint. And once that was completely dried, I actually went back over and did a lighter coat with the sugar metallic. And between these two paints, it just blended in amazing. And now it's time to remove that blue painter's tape. Now time for some embellishments. I found these adorable wood stickers at the Dollar Tree and I pulled the one off that says hello. Now the sticker part didn't stay on them very well, so I am gonna have to glue this. I placed the hello on a paintable surface and I grabbed my Folk Art Sugar Metallic Smoky Quartz paint. And we're going to give that hello a nice coat of paint. Now for some finishing touches. What we're going to do for this hello sign is I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm just going to paint a nice little rectangle in this corner of my painting because I want that to be nice and flush to the painting. So then we'll just set that hello sticker over the top, which doesn't have any stickies left, and it should hold up just fine. Next, I grab my hot glue gun and just put a little bead of hot glue at the top corner. And then I just add a quick little bow right at the top. Now our little hello sign is complete. Wow, I love how this turns out. This is just so adorable. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And there you have it, three beautiful decoupage projects. I hope you enjoyed these crafts as much as I did. And if you're looking for fun and creative craft ideas, be sure to check out my next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Thank you for watching, and until next time, craft more, stress less. <laughs>